everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. A new drug has been shown effective at treating the symptoms of autism. Wait, did I say new drug? Sorry, I meant to say 100-year-old drug. That drug would be Suramin, which was developed in 1916 and is typically used as a treatment for sleeping sickness. A new study conducted at the UC San Diego School of Medicine and published in the journal Molecular Autism suggests that the drug is also able to reverse both environmentally and genetically triggered symptoms of autism spectrum disorders. Suramin works by interrupting what's called the cellular danger response, or CDR signal. This is a defensive mode cells initiate when exposed to viruses or infections or when certain genetic mutations are present. It limits communication between cells, which, according to the authors of this study, affects brain development and leads to autism. In the UC San Diego study, suramin treatments were used to block the CDR signal, restoring normal cellular communication and reversing autism-like symptoms. It's important to note that this study was conducted using a mouse model. The study's authors stress that reversing autism-like disorders in mice is a long way from being able to do the same thing in humans. Nonetheless, this study is an important step forward not only in developing a treatment for autism, but in growing our understanding of its underlying causes. Next up, researchers at Princeton University have constructed a tiny laser that is being called a major step forward in the development of quantum computing. The laser is the size of a grain of rice and is powered by single electrons passing through quantum dots, which are nanoscale semiconductors. It was created in an attempt to get two double quantum dots to communicate with each other by having electrons move from a higher to a lower energy level while passing through the dots. As they moved through the dots, the electrons emitted microwave photons, which then bounced off of mirrors to generate a microwave laser beam, also called a maser. Understanding and controlling the interactions of photons and electrons is vital to the ongoing development of quantum computing. The paper describing the construction of the double quantum dot maser is published in the journal Science. Finally, last week's video ended with news of newly discovered planets orbiting stars beyond our sun. This week, we close with the possibility of yet unseen planets right here in our solar system. According to the calculations of scientists at the Complutense University of Madrid and the University of Cambridge, the orbits of extreme trans-Neptunian objects, the planetoids that circle the Sun far beyond the orbit of Neptune, suggest that at least two more planets are lurking at the edge of our solar system waiting to be discovered. This is a controversial finding, and the scientists behind the study admit they could be wrong. They're waiting for the results of other studies of trans-Neptunian objects to be published so they can increase their study's sample size. But the possibility of discovering more planets in our solar system remains one of the most tantalizing goals of astronomy. And if the discoveries in the last 20 years of hundreds of minor planets orbiting the Sun beyond Neptune have taught us nothing else, they have certainly proven that our own cosmic neighborhood is still full of surprises. An old drug could become a powerful new treatment for autism. Researchers pushed the envelope of quantum computing by building a rice grain-sized microwave laser. And scientists say that it's possible there are more planets yet to be found right here in our own solar system. That's the good news. You know, if they find another planet, I think they should name it after you. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs>